Okay, so on Friday when I wasn't here, I did give you a video you were supposed to watch that showed you how to use pages two and three together to find the, um, to find the, what am I trying to say? That find the landscape region for these cities. And it looks like you guys did a great job based on the uh, work that was up here. But before we even go over this, I do want to go to the part I skipped, which is on page 21. So if you guys could all flip back, we're just going to go real quick through what a landscape region is. What, when you hear the words landscape, what is what comes to your head? What do you start thinking about? Lawn mowing. Sure, lawn mowing, right? That, I agree. So a lot of us think of like a landscaping business or the landscaping that's at our house. If you are in art class, however, and uh, Mrs. Lachevich said, can you guys paint a landscape? What would you be painting? Mountains could be one thing you'd be painting. What's another thing people paint for landscape? Ocean, so, ocean like the beach. Um, if you were in Arizona, what might you be painting if you're painting a landscape? the canyons and the desert so the landscape we're talking about in this scenario is just basically what does the land look like where you're talking about and there are four major categories now yes there's some more detail in each category but there's about four major categories of landscape regions mountains plateaus plains and valleys do you guys already know some of those what's a, what's one you do know yeah, I'm guessing you guys know what mountains are, right? How would you describe a mountain landscape? Rigid, okay. What's probably the first thing that might come to your head about mountains? They're tall. That's really what we're getting at. How about plateaus, plains, or valleys? Any ideas? Does anybody remember what a plateau is? First of all, is a plateau high or low? It's another high thing, you know, the, but it's flat. It's high and flat. So we'll talk about what that is. How about plains? Big open area. Is it high or low? Typically low, at least not high. It doesn't have to be the lowest low, but it's not high like a mountain. And what do you, what do you got for valleys? The Grand Canyon is a valley, yep. So, it can't, uh, so what is a canyon or a valley then? If you had to show me with charades using your hands, what's a valley? Yep, a whole bunch of people just showed me a V with their hands. Perfect, all right. Well then let's get these into our notes real quick because you guys already know what they are. But in case we need to have them solidly written down, let's do this. So let's start, let's start at the beginning. We'll do mountains. So everything you guys said was correct. I'm just adding some more earth science-y details. We are on page 21 of the chapter two packet. So in the mountain bubble there, can you just write that they are high relief? That should be a new word to you, I'm guessing. Re high relief is just talking about high elevation. So like you guys said, they're tall. Mountains have what's called distorted rock structure. We'll get into this more when we're talking about rocks. But do you guys know what the word distorted it means? Not normal shape. My best way of thinking about this, you guys know what a fun house mirror is? Yeah. Okay, you know how when you look at yourself in a fun house mirror, you are not how you're supposed to be. Sometimes they make you like short and squatty or sometimes they make you like really tall and skinny. Um, they make you distorted. How would rocks get distorted or messed up in mountains? That's one way. We're going even before that. Do you guys know how mountains form? Again, if you could do charades with your hands. Yep, you guys all know the plates come together and they push up to make mountains. Um, imagine taking peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and squishing them together and making a peanut butter and jelly mountain. What's going to be messed up with those sandwiches? Are they going to be nice layered sandwiches anymore? No, they're going to be mangled messes of peanut butter, jelly, and bread piling up into a mountain. Same thing happens to rocks. 
when you push those rock layers together and those plates together, those layers get messed up just like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich would. So the layers get distorted. The rocks get distorted. That's what we're talking about with this distorted rock structure. Again, we'll get more into that when we talk about rocks. The key here is that mountains are high elevation, high relief. Plateaus, they're still high relief, just like Sam said. They're still tall. They're not as high as mountains. And we have horizontal bedrock, no distortion. This case, when you when those plates come together, instead of them mushing up, really what happens is one plate just slides over the other. So again, instead of the peanut butter sandwiches colliding and making a giant messy mountain, here those peanut butter and jelly sandwiches would just slide one on top of the other. So still tall, so still two sandwiches high, but nice and layered still, not all mushy. So that's a plateau. Ready for planes? These are also referred to as lowlands because they're low relief. They're not high. And just like Sam, I think, said earlier, they have gentle slopes or none at all. So they're pretty flat. I appreciate all of you wearing your pajamas. It's literally my favorite day of the school year. Uh, pajama day is my favorite. It was either this or a minion barbie. Oh, that would have been really nice too. Uh, I'm all for any sort of pajamas. Anything that lets me wear really comfortable clothes, I'm all for. Um, Ready for a valley? Yeah. You guys already told me. They are, they, I call them a dip or a low-lying area between two mountains or plateaus. You guys said the Grand Canyon is a perfect example. That is a valley. Some of you may live in a valley and your local landscape is a valley, but our whole area is not a valley. So to be considered a landscape region, it has to cover a large area. So knowing that, think of all of Pioneer, not just what we see out of our window. Thinking of all of Pioneer, could we classify this area as mountains or plateaus or valleys or a point? There are definitely some valleys here, no doubt. There is definitely some low-lying areas in between some high ones. Are we mountains here at Pioneer? Anybody been to the Adirondack Mountains? Okay, so not everybody has, but compared to the Adirondack Mountains, do we live in mountains? No, sorry, Bob. This is not a mountainous area. But do we have some pretty high elevations around here? We absolutely do. We have lots of hills. We have some. So there, this is at, we're living in a plateau, believe it or not even though it's not completely flat. And that's actually because of what Chris was mentioning earlier. Erosion has affected the plateau we live on, but we do live on a plateau. And I do wanna show you that on page um, three of, and two of your reference tables. So grab your reference tables, please. And we're gonna just go back to what you covered on Friday with the sub. All right, pages two and three, they go together. And I mentioned this in the video, which because I saw your homework, you guys must have watched the video. 
So we've got page three, which is the page that's got all the locations labeled on it in your reference table. If you notice, it also has the latitude and longitude. We are going to use page three more often than we use page two. But for last week's homework, you absolutely needed to use page two. Now, us, where are we on this map? Because we're not labeled. Okay, below Buffalo, towards the left side. Absolutely, all of those are true. So this technically, guys, you do not need to know this for the regions. But this is something that I teach you and make sure you understand because this is where you live. You should at least be able to kind of think about where you are on this map, even though we're not labeled. But that being said, the regions will only ask you about places that are labeled. So they will never ask you about Arcade or Yorkshire, but I think you should know anyway. So here's Buffalo. Hopefully, you know, we are south of Buffalo. Are we straight south of Buffalo? I'm seeing some head shakes. We are a little southeast of Buffalo, a little bit off to the side below Buffalo. It's hard to say on this map exactly where we are, but we're, we're not all the way down by Jamestown and we're not all the way up by Buffalo, somewhere in between a little off to the east. So if we are around here, which again, I'm not positive that's exactly where we are, but we're around there. What landscape region are we in? Okay, how'd you do that? Okay, so if, like I said in the video, it's hard to do this without looking at some landmarks that you can see on the map. So Buffalo is right above that little punch out of Lake Erie. And then I also see this little, like, I'm almost looks like a pimple on Lake Erie poking out. That's about where I lined us up with. So I can find that same little pimple on, uh, buff on the Lake Erie map up here. And it puts me somewhere around here. And then like I showed you in the video, if you line up the two maps, you can use a ruler. So you can't see them all the way up here, but there's my dot for us, bring it up here, puts us right about there, right in the Allegheny Plateau. So close to Erie, Ontario lowlands, but still in the Allegheny Plateau. So that was your homework that you had to fit classwork slash homework the other day. Let's just make sure, I know we didn't have all of the answers before. Here's a good start. Can you guys look at the, check your answers before Mrs. Ritz. Okay. Yep, he just remembered. Yep, bye. No homework. So uh, do you guys want me to read these or do you just want to look at them? Would it be easier if I read them? No. no? I, I, I'm going to do it anyway. Going straight down the list. Check your answers. We've got Albany, Hudson Mohawk, Binghamton, Allegheny, Buffalo, Erie, Ontario, Elmira, Allegheny Plateau, Ithaca, Allegheny Plateau, Jamestown, Allegheny Plateau, Kingston, Catskill, Messina, St. Lawrence, Mount Marcy, Adirondacks, New York City, I would have accepted Manhattan Prong or Newark Lowlands. Uh, Connecticut and Massachusetts, they are New England province and New Jersey is the Newark Lowlands. Going up the top, Niagara Falls is Erie, Ontario. Old Forge, Adirondacks, Oswego, Erie, Ontario, Plattsburgh, Champlain Lowlands, Riverhead, Atlantic Coastal Plain, Rochester, Erie, Ontario, Slidemount, Catskill, Syracuse, Erie, Ontario, Utica, Allegheny, Watertown, Erie, Ontario, Appalachia, or Pennsylvania is the Appalachian Plateau, Vermont, New England Province, Long Island, the Atlantic Coastal Plain. Did you get a 100? Can I ask those of you who didn't get 100, can you name one of the ones you got wrong? Which one did you get wrong? Oh, anybody get any wrong? You, yeah, that doesn't count. So there are a few that I would say are tricky. Like I said in the video, that Albany one was a little tricky 
because Albany is kind of like squeezed in over here. I don't think the regents would ask you about the ones jammed in over in this little corner of the uh, New York State. They'll keep it simple with ones like Syracuse and Rochester, Buffalo, uh, Jamestown, Elmira, or Riverhead. Ones that are clearly like in the middle of, of a landscape region. Any questions on how to read that map? Can, go back. Can I go back to those? Um, I am not going to leave this up while you finish copying it, though. I am going to move on. So that was the second part of Friday. The first part I had expected you to do was page nine. Page nine was just doing latitude and longitude on the world map. So that was on page five of your reference table. Okay, so this, this reference table got used a lot, so I'm not going to use that one. Mr. Grits. Uh, no. Yep. Okay, can I call you back um, on my planning period? Thank you. Bye. All right, so here are uh, the latitude and longitudes of these places. The directions did say you had to be accurate within five, which means you didn't have to be dead smack on with mine. Your answer could be five higher than mine or five lower than mine, uh, as long as you were close. The key though are the labels. Just like with that density stuff, no naked numbers. There is actually one acceptable na naked answer, and that is the Galapagos hotspot. I said that was right on the equator. Why does the equator not need a north or south label? Yeah, well, why doesn't it need a north or south then? Okay, what does north and the latitude tell you? It tells you how far north or south of the equator you are. So if you're on the equator, you can't be north or south of it, which is what you guys just meant. You just... Any of these that you did not get to mess up any west and east, that's, oh, I'm seeing some guilty looks. Do you mess up some west and east? No, uh, it was more of the split from, yeah. Oh, you did latitude, so you did longitude. No, you have the right numbers just flipped? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I'm glad you at least know how to do it, but if this was the regions, you'd give zero. So latitude has to come first. Flat comes first. Alphabetical order, the latitude goes before the longitude. Now, did you switch your west and east or just the whole answer you have in the wrong column? Just all of them. Yeah, okay, the so at least, as long as you're good with that, then just don't do that again, but you know what you're doing. Any other, did you guys get any wrong? None? Don't shake your head, you didn't even do it. Those of you who did it, did you get any wrong? I'd just like to go over any that you messed up. All right, great. We, wow, you guys are way ahead of my other class then. So what I want to do then is just make sure you're comfortable using the rest of the maps in the reference table. So that being said, right there on page nine is asking you now to use page four of your reference table. Page four is right up, obviously right above page five. So page four and page five have the, again, the same background map. So you'll, again, you'll see North America off to the right because this is the, the Western side of the map and the Eastern is on this side. We talked about that on Thursday. So it's the same background map, but now we have ocean currents. You guys might already be a little familiar with ocean currents, but probably not. We'll do this later in the year, but for now, I just want to use the map. So go ahead and do questions one through five real quick on the bottom of page nine using page four.
So using page four, we use this answer there. Who's struggling? Yeah, part of the problem with this is finding stuff on the map. This map is stuff we've never looked at before. So that's part of why I'm having you do all of these questions is just to get a little more comfortable finding places on these maps. All right, I think most of you are done at least. Let's go through questions one through five, five one through five on the bottom. What is the latitude of the equatorial current in the Pacific Ocean? So here's the specific, well, no, the Pacific Ocean. Here's the equatorial counter current. It's labeled right there. What do we, what do you want to estimate that la, what did it ask for? Latitude. Which way is latitude? Yeah, it goes across the paper. So if you wanted to do it the way I kind of mentioned, uh, I would put my ruler there. And it is gonna vary a little bit whether you're looking at the bottom of the arrows or the top, but it's right there slightly north of the equator. So what do you wanna estimate that to? What number did you guys say? 10? So 10, you can, it's not wrong. Here's, where 10 would be though. Here's zero, there's 20. So 10 would be about halfway. If I look, yeah, the top of that, the top's close to 10, maybe more like nine, but yeah, that would work. What did you say? Now, did you just say 10 flat? Did you just said two flat? Well, I had that, okay, that's what I was asking. Did you have it labeled? Okay, no naked numbers. So I agree, I would have been somewhere between like one and about nine degrees, depending on where you were reading, but what am I forgetting? No naked numbers, one degree north or nine degrees north. Any answer in between there, but make sure you didn't leave it naked. It has to be north. It's not south of the equator and latitude does not measure east or west. So your answer could only be labeled in north. Now, what's the latitude of the Antarctic circumpolar current? This one, again, it is in multiple places, and the arrows are a pretty wide range, so it depends on where you looked. I'll go with this label right here, the Atlantic, the Antarctic circumpolar current. So we went with this one, again, latitude, latitude, and I bring my ruler over and right about here, what would I estimate this to be if there's 40 and there's 60? 
50 would work, I would say my label is closer to the 55. So 55 degrees what? This case itself. Can I hear what you guys wrote? Because there are varying different answers. What did you put for that one, Chris? The one we just went over, number two. Okay, would you have landed? That works, yep, because that, and again, it all depends on which arrows you read. Would you have, Sienna? Okay, oh, Remy, 50, yep, there are ones in 50. What about you, Trenton, right? 65, 65 is, yeah, this one right here would be 65, but hopefully you were looking at this arrow, not up here. Um, I think that's, we covered them all. Anybody not sure if your answer is good? All right, let's do another one. What is the longitude spacing? In other words, I want to know each line is how many degrees for longitude. Which numbers are the longitude? No, the sides are the latitude. So longitude is when we put our ruler this way. So these numbers at the top and the bottom are measuring your longitude. So what are those going up by? Those are going up by 20s, 20 degrees apart. Huh? Um, yeah. Where'd you get that from? <laughs> Where you maybe 25 doesn't work here. They do are labeled zero to 23 and a half degrees. So maybe, yeah, these marks are 25. Yeah. These marks are 25, but the first of all, those are latitudes. Oh. And so longitudes, they go 0, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. Yeah. Okay, so change that. What is the longitude of Great Britain, which, by the way, is by the E in the word Europe? The capital E right here. What's that longitude? Oh, actually, it should have been the lower case E in Europe. Oh, no, it's that. I'm sorry. What did you say it was? zero. Great Britain is where the prime meridian is. It should have a latitude of zero degrees. Notice my zero does not have a label. Just like the equator, the prime meridian doesn't get a north or an east or a west. And what is the longitude of the Peru current? Here's the Peru current looking for longitude. What'd you put? Uh, depending on where you look, so 90 would have been, 90 would be here. So there are some arrows, but hopefully you weren't thinking of here, which is really 70. <laughs> the 78-ish would work. I would say between anything between 70 and 90, but just be careful which side you are at. So one thing that people tend to mess up is right here. This is halfway between 80 and 90. That's not, or sorry, 80 and 100. That's 90. Some people often get this confused and think this is 70 because it's next to 80. So just be careful. So again, anything from 70 to 90 degrees east, west, north, south, west that is west of the prime meridian all right one more thing but flip back to page 22 we're going to make sure you know the bottom of page 22 which goes with page three of your reference table so we had some questions on the bottom here Uh, we don't have very long, so I just want you guys to see if you can find those elevations of Lake Erie and Lake Ontario. Start there. So the regents will only ask you questions like this that would only get you points if you were on Jeopardy. So no one cares if you know the latitude or the elevation of Lake Erie off the top of your head unless you're on Jeopardy. So that means they are listed somewhere in your reference table. So hint, find Lake Erie, find Lake Ontario, probably talk about the elevation. But we are on page 20 of your reference table. 
I'm glad that you know who you are. It doesn't sound like you're kind. Anybody else? Can you guys skip the counting the rivers one? Because that's going to take you way longer than you have the time to find it. No, it's not four. I got seven. Not six, it's seven. There are seven labeled rivers. If you counted eight, that's because the Hudson River is measured or labeled twice. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Yeah. Well, but the. No, you would have got eight then. Well, I figured they. Oh, and then you still missed one. What you're saying then? No big deal, though. Have it. That. That is not a question they would ever ask you. All right, for the sake of time, I want to just make sure you know how to do these all. So where did you find the elevation of Lake Erie? Yeah, it's labeled right there. Lake Erie, 175 meters. Lake Ontario, same deal, labeled right there above the word Lake Ontario, 75 meters. So 175 meters, 75 meters. We talked about if you counted them all, there should have been seven. Let me show you. Niagara River, probably might have missed that one because it's teeny tiny over here. Uh, we've got, so that's one. We've got the Genesee River, two. Uh, the Susquehanna River, three. The Delaware River, four. The St. Lawrence River, five. We've got the Mohawk River, six. And then the Hudson River, which is labeled twice, makes seven. All right, um, find the map scale. What's the largest number listed for miles? And then the next question is kilometers. Here's the, the map scale. For the miles, it's listed on top. The kilometers is listed on the bottom. So we've got 50 miles and 80 kilometers. Then my question to you is, do you know how to find a straight line distance from Buffalo to Elmira? How will we do this? How will we find out how long of a road trip it would be from Buffalo to Elmira? That line right there. Yep. Yeah. How many of you, though, wanted to do this? Anybody want to do that? Any of you wanted to, like, do this with your fingers? Good. Don't do that. Even the pen thing, yes, it'll work kind of, but I don't re recommend it for a test. It's just not super accurate. Here's the way I think you should be doing it. There are other ways, but they always lead you open to making a mistake. So if you do it this way, I think you'll be pretty safe. So like Chris said, I'm taking a separate sheet of paper. I'm marking off Buffalo and I'm marking off Elmira. Then I take these marks on my separate sheet of paper and I bring them to the scale. How about you guys do this right now? Your separate sheet of paper can be an edge of any piece of paper. It can be the edge of your packet. It can be an edge of your test. It can be the edge of any piece of paper you own. Okay, some of you are ripping off little edges. That works for me. Here, if you want. Oh, you're already there. Anybody want a scrap sheet? They didn't need those directions. You're good. It's too big for the map scale to use once. So what should we do? Twice. You can do it twice. I'll show you what I mean if, if you don't know. So I'm putting Buffalo on the zero. The scale doesn't go all the way to Elmira. So I'm going to mark that off and label it 50. Now what do I do? 
start, so I can start over. I'm gonna put my 50 at zero. And now this, instead of this mark being 50 again, what is this mark? That's a hundred because two sets of 50 equal a hundred. And then start over again. Mine ends here. Does it, is it a 20? Wow. Nope. I'd say it's more like 18. So I would say 118 miles. We have time, I think. Go ahead and do the same thing from Watertown to Syracuse. What'd you get? I also got, I, I had 95, but 90 works for me. Hundreds pretty close to. And then did you find the name of the city on Long Island? That is Riverhead. There is only one city over there and it's kind of hiding. That's why I like to add it here. All right, no homework tonight. Please enjoy your homecoming week and please, Participate in Spirit Weeks. Tomorrow. Tomorrow.